What's up guys, now at home I do have a couple of different gaming PCs, one you've seen many times on the channel before is my main gaming system and it is in a great big fractal case. It sits next to my main television and I play on it mainly AAA games and the latest stuff that really comes out. The system specifications do allow me to play games in 4K and that's perfectly great for me, particularly at 60 FPS. But when it comes to those retro shooters, I actually built this little system. This is my second PC and it sits under my spare television and I use it mostly for retro shooters, old games, things like that but it is quite a low specification. It was actually cobbled together out of random parts that I could find in the studio. And up to now it's kind of served its purpose, but when we start looking at some of the more modern adaptations of those retro shooters, it is starting to struggle. But instead of actually upgrading this unit, which to be honest would count as the complete replacement anyway, I thought we'd build a new system together and at least show you guys how to build a console sized gaming PC. Now the system that I had before was actually quite an old specification, it had a 4th gen Intel processor and of course motherboard, it's an ITX motherboard and it only had a GTX 750 Ti, that is just the 2GB version and it's quite good for games like the original Doom and Duke Nukem but when you come to play modern things it really did struggle. So I'm going to be building a new one, I'm going to show you guys how to do it and I've got all of these parts here. Now I do love little tiny mini PCs and I like them to be around console size so that's kind of what we're aiming for and to do that you do need some very small form factor parts. Now of course when building a console size PC you have to start with your case because you need something that's the size of a console and I've decided to go for this. I have reviewed this case in the past, it is from Goodasuri and I believe it is the A02 model. It's really small, it's basically made of an aluminium kind of chassis with a steel inside. All of these plates actually do come off from the sides and the top and one of the unique things about these apart from its little tiny size and its modern looking front is it actually uses a flex power supply. Now that is allowing you to keep everything nice and small inside the case and to be honest I think it looks absolutely fantastic and I've wanted to use it for a while now so I thought why not use it on this build. It's going to look fantastic underneath the TV cabinet and hopefully we can get a pretty decent performance out of it. Now the rest of the system doesn't have to actually be that high in terms of specification we can actually just build it out of something a little bit older so we still keep prices down but it needs to be a little bit more than the system that I had before. Now when it comes to motherboards for a case this size you will need an ITX motherboard and I've decided to go for this. This is an MSI Z270i. Of course that means that it will only support Intel 6th and 7th generation and I totally forgot that I purchased this. I purchased it a while ago, it was quite cheap from eBay, it works, it's perfectly good. And it's got some really cool features. We've got access to an M.2 slot. We of course have got two slots for our DDR and it's going to be using DDR4 so we can at least keep that quite modern. And it actually looks quite nice in a case. So that one is the one that we're going to be using. Of course being a 6th and 7th generation board we do need a 6th or 7th generation processor. And again it is another item that I totally forgot that I had. It is the Intel Core i7-6700. That's actually going to pair really well with the graphics card that we're using today and it's going to give us a lot more power than the previous system. Being that the previous system was an i5 so we were stuck on uh, being a quad core processor. Now this one is technically a quad core processor but we've got 8 threads and we've got some hyper threading so it's going to be much much faster. It's also only a 65 watt chip because it isn't a K processor so we're going to be able to keep power down and the system should stay nice and cool as well. Talking about coolers we do need something that is a little bit low profile to fit inside this case. I did have a few options here. I could have gone with something from Noctua but I don't really need to go that extreme on a system like this. I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue when it comes to temperatures. So instead I've pulled one of these out of a box. This is an Arctic LP cooler. It's actually quite deep really but it does fit in the case. I have checked it and it does fit the 6th and 7th gen motherboard so it's basically the very similar clips to a stock cooler from Intel but they perform a little bit better and more importantly it is actually quite quiet. One of the other problems with the uh, other system that I've got is that it runs quite loud particularly with the graphics card getting up to speed and getting up to heat quite quickly and the cooler in it is just a very very stock Intel cooler and it kind of does this little bit of a rattle on it but this one should be perfectly fine and again it will fit into the box it's going to be a very quick installation so we're going to go for that if we do get any kind of temperature issues of course we'll upgrade the cooling in there maybe we will drop a low profile Noctua onto it or something but for now we're going to be using that and they're pretty cheap as well. Now before we dive into the graphics card that we've got which is this one we're actually going to be taking a look at the memory and the storage drive on this. In the previous system we only used a SATA SSD as all you have access to on a fourth generation board and it was a 480 gigabyte 
crucial bx500 i tend to use those drives a lot they're not the fastest drives in the world but for older systems like that they're perfectly fine this time though we're going to take a bit of a bigger leap and the reason for this is because the system previously did struggle with some storage space once you start kind of racking up those games and your operating system we kind of ran out of storage a little bit and even though that system did have 16 gigabytes of ddr3 i did run out of memory a few times it just meant that i couldn't ramp games up in terms of quality particularly old games you'd think that the you want them as higher quality as you can in a higher resolution and stuff so i actually reached out to one of our partners and they sent along these now for anybody out there that doesn't know who these are from this is actually from a company called time tech once they learned that we were going to be building this little tiny mini system they really wanted to help out so they sent across some ram and they sent across an ssd now packaging wise on these it's not the best this is pretty much all you get but that's all you really need and inside of it we do have an nvme drive it is a gen 4 drive but unfortunately it's only going to run in gen 3 on that motherboard I'm perfectly fine with that. For those of you that want to have a higher class motherboard, you can probably get away with Gen 4, but I'm happy with a Gen 4 drive on a Gen 3 board because it means I'm gonna get the full potential of the Gen 3 slot. This drive is actually pretty cool. It comes with a cooler on both the back and the front, and it is a one terabyte drive. So I'm gonna be doubling up my storage here. I'm gonna be able to fit way more retro games on there. And it looks pretty nice on a motherboard. I am gonna try and get hold of a couple more of these because I really like to use them on other builds. I think they look really cool. And hopefully I can get some two terabyte ones because most people build with two terabyte now. The actual cooler itself should help keep this nice and cool when it's on the system, particularly when it's being in a little box. It's definitely something worth checking out. If you're gonna be building a small system like this, Make sure your components have their own heat sinks or at least purchase heat sinks for them later on. You can get them for NVMe drives, but sometimes it's just cheaper getting them with it already pre-built on. So that's the drive that we're gonna be using. Super fast speeds when it's running in Gen 4, but in Gen 3, hopefully we'll get some pretty decent speeds anyway. When it comes to the RAM that they sent out, some of you out there may recognize the RAM, although you may not make the association with the brand, but it turns out that Time Tech actually do make the Pinnacle brand. This is 32 gigabytes in two 16 gigabyte sticks, our Pinnacle Conduit RAM. It is in white, so that won't make a difference to us because we're not really gonna be looking through that case. It would fit in a white build perfectly fine. It does have RGB and they look really nice, but the one great things about these is the actual price. If you go onto Amazon or anywhere like that, you will see these at fantastic prices. Some people may have actually avoided them because of that, because they thought it was cheap RAM, but they do work flawlessly. I have tested this RAM in another system, obviously, before we start building and we know that it's not gonna work. Uh, and you get some super fast speeds on this. This one in particular, of course, is DDR4 because of the motherboard that we're going into, and it is 3600 megahertz. Whether the board will actually take that, I believe it will. I'm not sure if the CPU will, but we'll see that once we start configuring it. Definitely worth checking out if you are building a budget system, any budget system, because it's very good RAM and it's at very good prices. Now, of course, for this little tiny mini system, we do need a flex power supply. And I'm going to be using one that I did a modification on a while ago. You guys may remember that one, you may not do. And it is this one here. This was a 250 watt gold rated flex power supply that I purchased a long, long time ago. Uh, it was in silver. Originally, it did come in silver. It doesn't have that many ports. You don't get any PCI Express ports or anything like that. You've got the basics. You've got a 24 pin. We've got a four pin for our EPS, which should work with the motherboard fine, particularly with that CPU. If we were going for anything faster in terms of CPU, I'd have to replace this because I definitely need an eight pin connection there. And it's got a couple of SATA connections. We're not going to be using that now in this build. But the one cool thing about this is that I actually painted it black, so it kind of went really nice with a build, and it, I gave it the Noctua upgrade. So inside of here, usually flex power supplies do have a really loud fan in them, and that's because they're generally just tucked away in servers and things like that. So this one did have that, and it was a little bit rattly, but I replaced it for a Noctua fan, and it's been absolutely silent since. Definitely worth doing that upgrade if you are going to be building something like this with a flex power supply. There's lots of different cases out there that do take flex power supplies, not just ones that look like games consoles, even little tiny mini towers, you can get away with them on them. So it's definitely worth doing that upgrade if you're going to go for that because it means that the system is going to stay pretty quiet. Now, a lot of people out there may actually frown upon the RTX 3050 and in normal size graphics cards, I would agree with them. They are just way too expensive for the performance you get. And you can get something on the second hand market that will absolutely trounce it in terms of performance for a lot less money. But when it comes to low profiles, which we need for this case, 
your options are quite limited. In actual fact, I was looking for a GTX 1650 for this system because I thought that was a good enough boost over the top of the 750 Ti, particularly with its 4 gigabyte RAM. And this one was actually cheaper, brand new, than I could pick one of them up in low profile format on the second hand market. I paid around £140 for this RTX 3050 card. It does come with 6 gigabytes of VRAM, so it's a little bit more than the 1650 and the performance of it outperforms the 1650 by a hell of a lot. It is a major difference in terms of performance, even though overall the 3050 is not the greatest graphics card in the world. But being low profile means that it's going to fit perfectly fine in this case. Another option for low profile graphics cards and probably one that I would recommend, although the price is quite a bit higher than this, is the RTX 4060. Probably one of the fastest consumer, if not the fastest consumer, low profile graphics card out there. That would make sense if it wasn't like three to four hundred pounds when this one's only 140 pounds. This system doesn't need to be the latest and greatest. It just needs to be able to play those old games. And I think this is going to be absolutely perfect. Now that we've got all of the parts ready to go, I suppose all we need to do is build the system and see how well it performs. Now the system has turned out amazingly. Here it is, a little tiny little box. I actually really do love the look of this system. It kind of really does look like a games console and it is the size of one. It's actually smaller than modern games consoles, which is pretty cool. Although it does sound like a games console, you can hear the fans spinning pretty much all of the time. And I'm pretty sure it is that Noctua fan inside the uh, power supply. Unfortunately, when I fit that, I just left it at the standard speed just to make sure things stayed nice and cool. And sometimes you do hear the fan a little bit, but it's not too much. And if it's tucked away inside a TV cabinet, which this one will be, you're not going to be able to hear anything really. So that's actually an OK sign. I will double check to see what happens once it gets up to speed and up to temperature around the uh, graphics card fans and the CPU fan. And like I said before, I will make adjustments to it, maybe swap them out for Noctuas or something if I need to. But so far, everything is running swimmingly. The system is up and running with a few games installed. We've just got a quick heaven benchmark here running and everything seems to be pretty good. The CPU is sitting at 60 degrees. The graphics card is sitting around 66 degrees. And we can see a little bit of an imbalance here. In particular, the CPU is kind of underutilized, whereas the graphics card is 
at around 100% now. That's okay because it does mean that we're going to get the full potential of that RTX 3050. As you can see, the differences are huge there when it comes to things on paper, particularly having that extra RAM is really going to help us out. Having that extra storage is really going to help us out. And to be honest, even the older system used to run the games that it was designed for. Playing games like the original Doom and the original Duke Nukem are flawless on there. But when you came to actually play some of the more modern versions of those games, or at least adaptations, things like Doom Eternal, you're very lucky to get even 30 FPS out, even in 1080p, and that's because the graphics card only had two gigabyte of VRAM. You couldn't really lift the graphics quality up or get any kind of real performance out of it. And then when I played games like Hellbound, which is a game that I have really wanted to play for a while, I play it on my main system because this system or the previous system to this just would not play it at all. You're getting around 25 to 30 frames per second and the game was unplayable because it just stuttered a lot and those games were run in low settings. So we're going to retest them today and we'll probably retest another game as well and see how well this system performs. Now one game that I did actually want to play on the old system but just would not run on it was Dead Island 1. It is more of a classic game now that I would call it a classic kind of a zombie survival game but also a classic shooter as such so i want to test that game out before we get into any kind of comparisons so far the game has loaded up perfectly fine and uh, from the stats in the corner here around 138 frames per second clearly it's going to be playable it wasn't on the old system so here is a big leap up here already we'll pop over to the settings though we'll see what we've actually got configured we are running in 1080p with a texture quality of high Everything else is a mixture of medium and high, although I do turn off the ambient occlusion, motion blur, uh, we've left anti-analyzing on, turned off film grain. I don't really like all of those kind of settings, so I tend to turn them off. So we've got a pretty good best quality setting here. We'll just go back into here and vertical sync is off, so we're gonna see what it can actually get to in terms of performance. We didn't make any changes, so we'll get back out of this. We'll go back into the game. Everything seems to be running smoothly at the moment. My mouse speed does seem to be very high, but that's probably just where I left it last time I played the game. We'll run outside. We'll get down into some kind of action, see what happens when the performance uh, sees bigger things and more going on the screen. If you haven't played this game before and you're into your zombie games, you should definitely check it out. Probably play it before you play Dead Island 2 because it just kind of really sets the scene. We'll run down onto the beach, I think, because that's going to give us the best uh, kind of performance look. We are still getting an average of 138 frames per second, although the continuous has jumped up to 160, 170, 180, 190. The system is starting to warm up. I can hear the fans kind of uh, kicking up now. That graphics card sitting at around 78 degrees, which is not great. Maybe we do need to add some extra cooling into the system, but I generally wouldn't be running the games at this kind of performance anyway. I would limit their FPS to around 60 because I find that's really good for old school shooters. But so far, everything is running swimmingly on this game. 1% lows are a little bit low. It's sitting at 39, 40. Still provide a smooth gaming experience, particularly for how old this game is. Um, but I'm sure if we actually limit things down a little bit, we could get a much smoother experience out of it. Now what we'll do is we'll jump into those other games. We'll do a bit of a comparison. The first game we'll probably jump into is Doom Eternal because that one really did push the previous system and this will show us if we can make any kind of difference. Remember the game before got around 30 FPS and that was in a low setting because we just couldn't boost it any higher due to the VRAM. So let's see if we can get a decent at least 1080p 60 FPS experience. Now in Doom Eternal, we're clearly getting a much better statistic in the corner here even if it is running in the air to an ATP low settings we're currently getting an average of 103 frames per second with a 1% low of 88 that would provide a very smooth experience and the game does look quite nice so we'll pop over to the settings and we'll see what we've got configured here so we are in a 1080p resolution vertical sync is disabled we'll scroll down here so we are currently running in an ultra setting I'm not really keen on running things in ultra. We'll set it down to high and we'll see what we can get with that. We'll apply those settings, jump back into the game. So now we're getting an average of 110 frames per second with a 1% low of around 51, 63. It's kind of adjusting itself a little bit. We'll do a bit of a running around and we'll let them stats kind of uh, clear themselves up a bit. The game is playing extremely smooth. There is no stuttering at all. We've got very uh, good frame time here. So. Let's dive down into some action. That's really going to be the test. Kill some of these bad guys here. Now, we are running at an average of 128 frames per second with a 1% low of 99. That's going to be more than enough to play this game and is a big difference from this previous system. 
Even though a lot of people do not like the RTX 3050s, for a use case in terms of this, they are perfect. They are perfect graphics cards to drop into um, small form factor PCs. They require no additional power connections. They are very efficient in terms of how much uh, energy they use. So you can use a very low power supply as well. I think this is a great experience so far. It's something that I wouldn't have been able to play in the other system. But now I can play it perfectly fine, perfectly smooth. And to be honest, I probably could jump the graphics up to the ultra setting, get a little bit more quality out of it, and the game would still be more than playable as well. Now, the big test for this system is a game called Hellbound. If you haven't heard of it before, it's more of a, it's a small game that was actually created by somebody in a 90s era style. So it's very much like the original Doom, the original Duke Nukem, except it's very ramped up. The graphics are very good. There's a lot of physics going on and stuff like that. Clearly somebody just loves 90s style retro shooters and developed this game to kind of really bring that genre back and unfortunately on the previous system it was completely unplayable. Around 25 frames per second was like the maximum I could get out of it even in a low setting and it just made for an awful experience. This is something that I did try and play on my big system and it's okay it runs perfectly fine on there of course because it's quite high end um, but I'd really like to play it on this little system on the spare television because that's kind of where I dedicate that time to it's all about the nostalgia really so the game is running perfectly fine we're in the menu system at the moment if you haven't played it definitely go check it out if you like this kind of shooter I'm sure you'll see as we go through the game what it's like but we're getting an average now of 60 fps in the menu it's probably quite limited we'll jump straight into the game and then we'll double check our settings when we're in there i can't actually remember where i am in this game but we'll head over to the options first we'll just go to settings we'll go to video settings we are currently running in 1080p we'll go down to quality the quality is set to high i don't think we've got any vertical sync on so we've got vertical sync turned off 100 resolution scaling so this is pretty much the setting that i would like to play the game at i don't think we've got any weird kind of things we've got effects set on but there's no kind of uh blurs and things like that so although motion blur is there yeah we do have motion blur and i've turned it off because i don't like that but let's head back into game we'll discard any settings changes because we don't want to save anything and we are currently getting an average of around 60 fps i don't know whether there is a built-in limit on this game or not but this is way smoother than what we had before We've got lots of bad guys coming at us now as you can see if for those that haven't played it there's a lot that's going to happen on the screen it's one of those games where as you progress through things will spawn and you'll have to kind of defeat them in an arena cut style base thing until you defeat them all and then you can unlock the door but apart from that i think this game is way playable now we can actually get a good experience out of it and i'm really chuffed because I've really wanted to play this game for a while. Of course, I die very quickly. <laughs> you do die in 90s style games very quickly because of how they were developed and not many people are used to them. But we'll go back to the last checkpoint. We'll get in there again. We'll see what happens as the system really heats up under this game. It is putting it under quite a bit of pressure. Loading the game, the CPU is going crazy. When we're in the game here, we're actually not too bad on the, C on the graphics card here. We're running at around 40-50%. I would probably suggest that that is some of the optimization of the game itself. We've double checked the settings, nothing is locking us or freeing us out. I think what the system's doing is that there is some kind of artificial uh, limit on the frames per second here, which means the graphics card doesn't really have to work too hard to get that 60 FPS. It'd be really nice to see if we could actually unlock that limit at some point and see what the system would fully get. but. I don't need to because as long as I can play it, I'm pretty happy now. Well, there you go. This is how you build a console sized gaming PC. I know a lot of you out there have got them. I definitely want to hear about them. So make sure you drop in the comments below. Do you have a little tiny system like this that you've built and you replace for like a games console? You can run things like Linux on them, particularly things like Steam OS. So you get the full console experience. Maybe I'll upgrade to that at some point. You guys let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. And I'll show you how to do it if you really want to. There's a few different types of Linux operating systems out there you can use. Uh, Crimera OS actually does look and feel and pretty much use Steam OS's uh, interface. So you can get a really good, nice looking system out of it. And it's all fully controller supported. So you don't need a keyboard and mouse. 
perfect for TV gaming. I want to thank Time Tech again for sending across some parts to support this build. I will definitely check out their brand going forward. I have seen the Pinnacle RAM in particular and I've been tempted to get it but I was never really sure because of what people said about it but clearly it is working beautifully in the system. I probably don't even need 32 gigabytes but that's actually going to keep me going for a long time with it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and you want to see other kind of little builds that we do. I've got lots of more little things like this planned and we'll probably build some more retro stuff going forward and i'm sure as always i'll catch you guys in the next one